some bacterial effects the salmon allows. Uh, again, a problem there with the, uh, the aquatic environment. And the other thing I'm, I may just say, uh, well, getting very old, uh, uh, phage therapy obviously it uses bacteria, the phages, which are viruses which attack bacteria, they're not viruses. So, uh, um, and they're using that in Israel. The big problem with that is that there's nothing to stop people copying and growing their own phage. So there's not really that many commercial opportunities in that. Right. Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Right. I, I covered this earlier. Sorry, I forgot there was a slide. Um, so I'll just skip through it very quickly. Um, biosecurity and disinfectants, and say it's it really is um, uh, underplayed really uh, at the moment in, in Europe. Um, there can be various disinfectants to be used to sterilise well boats, equipment, clothing, and I don't think it's uh, uh, as well used as it could be. There are many products available. Um, none of them are licensed, although the EU has actually introduced a, a testing guideline now. I know I've, um, I've, been, I've submitted a couple of paper products to this guideline where they run it against a number of uh, packages and whatever. Um, possible, some of the stronger uh, disinfectants may have some environment, environmental impact, particularly, say, with well loads where you're using large, large quantities of them. And they're being pumped out of the sea. Um, and also, you know, there are a number of conditions where they alter the specificity of the power of them. Um, and uh, basically, they are undervalued and, and underused, and there's more potential there. Right Can you go, you go on the other side? Other side, okay. Yeah. Um, I've done that one, haven't I? I think that. Um, alternative control measures, chemotherapy, and immunostimulants and immunomodulators, I mentioned, are being widely used. Uh, the problem is that with them is, um, is that they, they are not registered and they're not, not likely to be registered. As soon as you make a medicinal claim for an immunostimulant, say, it protects against certain disease or enhances protection, then it becomes a medicinal product and has to be licensed with all the uh, uh, the legislation and the cost of doing that. So it's, it's a pity really, there are sort of grey area and it would be nice to look if the, uh, the regulatory authorities change their stance on this a bit. Um, biological control measures, I just mentioned uh, the RASP and the sea lice, which is are being very successful currently, and uh, other biological control. Obviously, um, to start off with, avoidance and prevention is very important um, to learn from the mistakes that other people uh, made, um, biosecurity measures, ensuring that uh, the disease doesn't come onto your uh, um, site, and also constant monitoring and surveillance of the fish farm in terms of disease. Uh, it's better to catch a disease early than let it get established. Uh, uh, with alternative treatments, the big difficulty is is that uh, any any medicinal claim against the disease means it has to be registered under the, this directive, um, and uh, the cost really includes the licensing of some of those. We spoke about. Um, I talked about diagnostics. Yeah. Immunostimulants. Well, there are a number of. Um, there's a definition of an immunostimulant, something that will elevate the non-specific. Uh, or a specific immune response. Um, and there are lots of products which have been tested with various results. Um, there's a lot of research going on now, some of it not really very uh, exciting research, and very poor research, a lot of it is, I uh, the other week I was chairing a session in Prague, and there were a lot of very weak papers on various plant extracts and whatever, the, which would, you know, do this. Um, um, as I said, the, the, the um, uh, immunomodulation, um, the fish have a very similar immune response to the animals, and we're looking at different uh, chemicals which will either stimulate uh, uh, cell uh, humoral immunity involving antibodies or um, uh, T lymphocytes, uh, which is the cellular branch, 
A lot of these products uh, actually affect macrophages, uh, which present the antigen to, to, uh, uh, to the immune cells. Um, and uh, with also the use of antibiotics, which exclude a lot of pathogenic bacteria. Um, oligosaccharides help T lymphocytes. Um, we've got various nucleotides, which uh, uh, help cell division. There's a, an algal based one which. Uh, enhances cell division and proliferation, so you get more macrophages and lymphocytes at the uh, at the site. But various ones, and the, the probability is that uh, you know some of these can be used as a cocktail, so they have different effects and be used at the same time at the time. So it's uh, from the top, it's the intestinal. Uh, in this arc, the level of the intestine. This is the intestine. Of exclusion of sites, so good bacteria prevail, and then you get the reaction on the lymphocyte level, and down to the cell level where the nucleotides stay at all. And if you want to say, preserve the membranes of the cells, you go back. It's a limb, another adiosin. So there is a this is a flow, continuous flow, and you whatever you do is like you uh, you act on a uh, selected level. And there are many, many things, many products that they are available in the market. So one one example is that to the these products are well everything. Everything in the walls are used in better programs of monoclonal rights. The purification of the nuclear tides <coughs> is also used, and they use also enriched cells with selenium and other uh, minerals. So it's, a, it's one example of the products that are used. You will notice that one of the Big one of the glucans that you use is called MacroGuard. And the reason it's called MacroGuard is that the yeast that we united some basic research with this in Norway, the yeast that we got to do was from the Mac Brewery. So <laughs> that's why it's called Macro Guard. Okay. okay. Um, like now let's say let's talk about the diseases which was in Sibrin specific. Uh, we said up until now we put uh, we're trying to put the context. We put the context of where the industry is, and how important are the diseases in principle, what are the tools, the management tools that we have in health management, and how there are going into specific diseases that we have to resolve with vaccination. And uh, in order to conclude this uh, session of uh, putting everything in context. So the, we have several diseases that uh, we can do something about, and several that we Manage only to avoid them. So, a lot of parasites, monogenic parasites here in the gills, they are very common. The action is to clean the nets uh, often and uh, to just uh, make uh, sure that bees are not uh, in high certain densities. Neuposystems is a problem in uh, hatcheries, and you have to be very, very difficult to eradicate. But if you have it uh, on, on drawing, it's uh, like a benign infection. 40, 40 days after, you see that the uh, fish recover. But in the meantime, of this, they are uh, subject to pasteurosis and other bacteria. And you might have some losses because of the bacteria, the secondary bacteria, not because of the resistance. The filiosystis is also a parasite in the gene. Uh, parasite is something like an amino type organism. In the gear, uh, the codines here, it's always you, you see it in pre drawing units most of the time. Uh, it's uh, you can use format with other color stuff to clean the part of the diet, but uh, usually it's like uh, an indication that you're not practicing the pre drawing correctly, so it's time you, you move batches, you clean like tanks, you know, to keep. Basic hygiene conditions. Ceratomycin is in the, in the, in the heart and in the CD also, it's another parasite. 
in the car. And Salomax is like, occasional, might be, if you have too, too much Salomax uh, in the, uh, you might have problems, but uh, for the CPU, which is a similar parasite for 2000 CP, what we found is that if you, uh, in the summer, where the sibling is using, uh, people are using more DP uh, content in the diets, so the peristalsis of the gut decreases because of the lipid content. It's typical like mammals and humans. So then the parasite takes time to affect the residuum. So when we get that, it's like the residuum especially, we use uh, in these uh, theocas or whatever one will expect the disease, we use fiber, more fiber in the diet, 11% fiber. And reduce the level of fat, so the capacity is increasing, and this uh, this parasite cannot have the total time to affect the the activity. So it's uh, we change the day, we avoid the parasite. It's uh, not spectacular. So cryptocurrency is also a very typical uh, yield uh, parasite, but. Uh, <laughs> This is not a parasite. Uh, ah,